Holy Caitlyn Jenner, have you heard the latest gender bending news, folks? For the first time in Olympic history, this summer's games in Rio could see transsexual athletes taking part. Even those who haven't undergone gender reassignment surgery. No, seriously. International Olympic Committee medical officials say they're looking at changing their policy to adapt to current social and legal attitudes when it comes to transgender athletes. Translation, the IOC is acquiescing to mind-numbing political correctness. But consider this, the biggest potential losers regarding the new tranny policy will surely be female athletes. This is to say those athletes who are real women as opposed to Franken females that were once men. Welcome to planet Earth, folks, looking more and more like the bizarro Superman world with every passing day. Look, if a man or a woman wants to slice and dice his or her genitalia and take hormone pills and add or subtract mammary glands, I say, hey, happy Halloween, kids. Knock your socks off, or leotards, as the case may be. But when it comes to pseudo-women who were originally born male, does anyone think that they should be allowed to compete against real women? This isn't transphobia. It's biology 101. Compared to natural women, men have bigger bones, more testosterone, larger lung capacity, and greater aggression assertiveness. This is why, with the exception of equestrian events and auto racing, men and women compete in separate divisions. It's about maintaining a level playing field. But now males masquerading as females may soon be competing against those persons who were born female. This creates the most unlevel playing field imaginable. And guess what, folks? A precedent has already been set right here in Canada some 15 years ago. Our gender-bending cautionary tale focuses on former competitive mountain biker Michelle Dumaresque. Michelle was actually born Michael, by the way. Dumaresque underwent sexual reassignment surgery and eventually entered the Bear Mountain Race in Mission, B.C. in 2001. The women's division, that is. Can you possibly guess what happened next? Not only did Michael Michelle win the race, but the she-male won by 10 seconds, a considerable margin in a sport where races last two to five minutes. In fact, during that season, Michael Michelle collected enough points in the Canada Cup final to win the overall series. That earned him an automatic berth on the national team. <laughs> Why, Grandma, what big muscular thighs you have. Several real female cyclists were justifiably outraged. But the Canadian Cycling Association threw those women under the transgender bus. The CCA was just too terrified to challenge Michael Michelle in court. And it didn't want to be seen as being, you know, transphobic. So the CCA let him compete unabated as a woman even though real women cyclists were getting slaughtered. It gets worse at the 2006 Canadian Nationals, which Michael Michelle won, of course. The boyfriend of second place finisher, Danica Schroeder, jumped up onto the podium and helped Schroeder put on a t-shirt reading, quote, 100% pure woman champ. That prompted the Canadian Cycling Association to issue a suspension. Not to Dumaresque for posing as a female, but to Schroeder for wearing truth and advertising haberdashery, which apparently hurt Dumaresque's feelings. Oh, poor baby. There was even a glowing documentary made about Dumaresque entitled, you guessed it, 100% Woman. Check it out. On a cellular level, is she really male or female? She wasn't born a female like the rest of us. I don't think she's 100% woman. Why should we have to compete with her? I want to race a bicycle. That's what it comes down to. I fit on the gender spectrum as a woman. I believe I have a right to be there, and I believe it's fair. Now that clip is very telling, isn't it? Michael Michelle wants to race bicycles against bona fide women. And as she states, quote, I believe I have a right to be there, I believe it's fair, end quote. Brilliant. Because Michael Michelle believes she has a right, then by golly, that right must surely exist. What an astonishing sense of entitlement. Sorry, Michael Michelle may resemble a caricature of a woman, but to quote philosopher King Austin Powers, That's not your mother, it's a man, baby! <laughs> Bottom line, men and women compete in different divisions because it would be inherently unfair for women to compete against men. 
if the IOC must accommodate transsexual athletes, then why not establish transsexual divisions? Or much like the Canadian Cycling Association, is the IOC simply too gutless and too PC to do the right thing? For the Rebel.media, I'm David the Menzoid Menzies.